Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team. In today's video, I'd like to help you better understand the differences between an HDMI splitter, an HDMI switch, and an HDMI matrix. Because all three of these products provide a tremendous amount of control over your media content, and even though all three of these will help you manage your HDMI connections between your media devices and your displays, they operate slightly differently and it can be a little confusing. So I thought I'd start off with a really basic understanding of what a splitter does, what a switch does, and what a matrix does, and I'll give you examples of where you might use it. I'll even do a demonstration to show you how they all operate, and then I'll come back with a few things to keep in mind if you're going to compare the O-Ray products to others you may be considering, because O-Ray builds a lot of advanced features into their technology that not only works for today, but also future-proofs the product so you can use it with upgraded equipment later on. So let's get started with the splitter. So an HDMI splitter is a really basic device that essentially takes a single input of HDMI media content and splits that into multiple outputs. In this case, it's a BK-102, which means I've got a single input and two outputs. Now, splitters are available on the market with four outputs, eight outputs, or even larger numbers, but this is the most typical one where I've got a single input to multiple outputs. So I can connect two monitors up to this with a single HDMI media device and share that content across those two monitors. Now, a switch is a little bit more complicated. In this case, I've got a BK21, which has two inputs and a single output. And what this switch allows me to do is to have two HDMI media streams, and using the buttons on the front or the included remote control, I can decide which of those media streams is sent to my single output monitor. Now again, you can have multiple inputs on this, you can have four, you can have eight, so it gives you a choice of inputs that you can share that monitor across. And that's really handy if you've got multiple computers at your desk, or if you've got a media center where you've got a game console, a DVD player, maybe a computer, and you need to switch that widescreen display between all those devices. Now the matrix is the most complicated, but also the most flexible, and it really is kind of a combination of the splitter and the switch in one because the matrix, in this case, it's the BK202, it allows you to have two inputs in this case and two outputs. Now, you also have complete control over which of those inputs is sent to which of those outputs at any given time, again, using the buttons on the front or the included remote control. And the reason that has more flexibility is because I can send the same input to both monitors at the same time. I can switch them to have one input go to one monitor and then flip it to the other monitor. So it gives you complete control, again, over which of those HDMI inputs is sent to which of the outputs. And again, these are available as well with larger numbers of inputs and larger number of outputs as well. But these three in particular, are the most common ones used in the consumer environment where you've got a splitter where you've got multiple displays with a single input, or you've got a switch with multiple inputs to a single display, or in this case, you've got multiple inputs to multiple outputs. So this is one that you'll probably use less often than these two, but all three of these are incredibly functional. One other thing I wanted to mention about the switch is that in this case, I've got multiple inputs to a single output. It can be the other way as well, where I can have a single input to multiple outputs and switch that input between monitors. So the switch is a little bit more versatile in that respect, but that's pretty much it for the basics. Now, if you stay tuned next, what I'll do is a quick demonstration to show you the splitter works, show you the switch works, and show you the matrix works. And then I'll come back again and point out a few things that O-Ray has built into these particular products that I think really set them apart from the competition. Now I'd like to show you the differences between these three products so you understand which of them might be helpful with your own media equipment. And for this demonstration, over here, I've set up two small media players as my input devices. One of them is currently displaying an image of a laptop, and the other one is displaying an image of a game console, just to make it easy to tell them apart. Over here, I've set up two monitors as my output devices, and in front of me, I have the HDMI splitter, the HDMI switch, and the HDMI matrix. Now, we'll start with the HDMI splitter. This product is designed to take a single input and split it among multiple output devices at the same time. In this case, it's a single input to two outputs. And I'll start by connecting my media device up to the input. I've got an HDMI cable already connected, and I'll plug that into the HDMI input port in the back of the unit. And now I can connect up my output devices. I have two HDMI cables connected to these monitors, and those will plug into HDMI output number one and HDMI output number two. And now we're ready to add power. I've already plugged the power supply in. The other end of that cable has a barrel connector on it, and I'll plug that into the DC input port. Now, the minute I add power to the unit, it immediately starts an internal power on self-test where it's checking all the electronics just to make sure everything is working fine. It's also checking the resolution of my media device and the resolution of my output devices to make whatever adjustments are needed to give you the best possible image. And there you go. I've got a single input to multiple outputs simultaneously. 
Now we'll move on to the switch. Now the difference between these two is the switch is designed to take multiple inputs and deliver those to a single output and give you the choice of which of those inputs is sent to that output. So let me disconnect the power supply. I'll disconnect the two outputs and I'll take the one media device and plug that into HDMI input port number one. And I've got another HDMI cable connected to the second one and I'll plug that into HDMI input number two. And now we only need one output device so I'll use the top monitor right here and I'll connect that to the HDMI output port. Now we're all set to add power. Again, I'll plug the power supply into the DC port in the back. The minute I do, this one starts an internal power on self-test. In addition, it's checking the resolution of both of the media devices and the resolution of the monitor, and it's gonna make the adjustment to give you the best possible picture on that display. It takes a couple of seconds for that to happen, and then you'll see the media stream displayed on that top monitor. And there you go. Right now, we're looking at the laptop, which is one of the inputs. If I'd like to switch to the other media device, I tap this button. It takes a second to make the adjustment because they can be different resolutions. The minute it makes that adjustment, there you go, there's the game console. So you can switch back and forth all you like by tapping that button, or you can use the remote control to make that change as well. Now the third product is a matrix, and that's a little bit more complex because it's sort of a combination of these two products in one. This one will take multiple inputs and deliver those to multiple outputs. So you can actually control which of those inputs is sent to which of those outputs, again, at any given time, by tapping the button on the front or using the remote control. So let me disconnect the power. And in this case, we're gonna connect both of the inputs up to input number one and input number two. And we'll also connect up both of the output devices to output number one and output number two. And once I get that connection made, we can add power. Now once I have power to the unit, it's gonna start that same power on self-test the other two did. It's gonna check the input and output resolutions. It's gonna take a second for that test to finish. And once it does, you'll see the media streams displayed on the monitor. So we'll wait for that to come up. And there you go. So we've got different media streams. So I've got a laptop on the top and a game console on the bottom. Now each of these have individual controls on the front with these buttons. So if I wanna change one of them, I'll tap this button. And you can see that's blinking out for a second. It's gonna come back on. And now I've got a game console on both. So what I've done there is taken the same input and sent it to both outputs at the same time. Now, if I wanna switch the other one, I'll tap that button, the bottom will blink out, and it'll flip to the other media input. There you go. So what you have here is a product that, it's a matrix that allows you to basically select which of the inputs is being sent to which of the outputs at any given time by tapping those buttons on the front. And the advantage of that is it gives you the ultimate flexibility to decide which of those media products is sent to whichever display you happen to be using at that moment, whether it be a widescreen TV or a monitor on your desk or a portable monitor, anything you can connect up through HDMI, this gives you the ultimate flexibility. So splitter, switch, matrix, all incredibly functional, all a little bit different in the way they handle the HDMI connections, but they're incredibly easy to connect up and get working, and it's just that simple. I hope those demonstrations were helpful. Now here are a few really important things to keep in mind when you're comparing these O-Ray products to others you may be considering. The first thing has to do with resolution. All three of these products fully support 8K ultra high definition media content, which is really important because even though today you may be enjoying 4K content, you know eventually you'll upgrade your media gear or your displays to 8K, and knowing these components can handle that higher resolution means you'll never have to worry about upgrading them later on. They're essentially plug and play compatible with all your future upgrades. Another important consideration is the certification level. All three of these products are fully HDMI 2.1 and HDCP 2.3 compliant. And the reason that's important is because the HDMI standard has evolved a lot in recent years and now includes a lot of advanced features that you'll want to take advantage of. Things like CEC, which stands for Consumer Electronics Control, that lets you control all of your media equipment with a single remote. Or things like ARC or eARC or HDR, all of those are built into the HDMI 2.1 standard, so it's important any component you're considering adheres to that latest standard. The HDCP compliant is important because that controls the copy protect the content that these devices can support. So for example, if you're playing some HDCP copy protect the content that requires 2.3 and the device you're using only supports an older version, that content stops at the device. You won't actually be able to display it. So knowing that all three of these products adhere to the latest HDMI 2.1 and HDCP 2.3 standard means you can play the widest variety of media content through these devices between your media players and your display. 
display. And the last thing I want to mention was the inclusion of the remote controls for the Switch and the Matrix. They're not as important for the splitter because it's essentially a passive product. You'll connect up a single media product to it and two displays, and it just sits there and does its job. With these two, you may have to switch the inputs every now and then, and if it's on top of your desk, it's not that big a deal because you can hit the button on the front, but if you're using these in your media center, you have to think about where this is sitting. It's on a cabinet quite a ways away from you when you're sitting on the couch. So including a remote control means that you can be back in the comfort of your chair or on your couch, hit a button, and make the selection of which input is sent to your display, or in this case, which input is set to which display. So the inclusion of the remote is really critical if you're going to use these in your media room. If you're using them on your desk to control your computer and your monitors, it's not that big a deal, but I like the fact that they're included because it gives you a lot more flexibility. And that's pretty much it for today. So I hope you've enjoyed this review, and until next time, Thanks for watching.